everybody. My name is Danielle Olson, and I'm a fourth year PhD candidate at the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. I also work as a research assistant for the MIT Center for Advanced Virtuality, directed by Professor Fox Terrell. Today, it's my pleasure to be joined by Kareem Ben Khalifa for MIT CAS Three Question Series. All right, so um, I would love for you to just give an introduction to the audience of who you are um, and where, where your work has taken you. So I am in Berlin. My name is Karim Ben Khalifa. This is my base here. And I've been a war correspondent for about 15, 18 years, depending on uh, how you, you see that at the end. And um, I've done a project called The Enemy, uh, which I started developing when I was at the Open Doc Lab uh, at MIT, and then worked with Professor Fox, Fox Harrell and CAST to develop that further. Uh, that became a full blown experience after. <laughs> Too close to really phenomenal. The enemy was born out of my frustration as a photojournalist and war correspondent. For almost 20 years, I have photographed conflicts and witness the consequences of huge geopolitical shifts. When I became a father, I simply knew I could not keep working on the front lines. Yet, I was not done trying to understand wars. My friends in Israel, when they know I'm heading for Gaza, can't help themselves but to wish me luck and to stay safe. They believe a lot of people in Gaza are irrational. Also, when I spend weeks working in Gaza and I'm about to return to Israel, my Palestinian friends are telling me the exact same thing. Be careful there. The project is rooted in my experience as a war photographer, going from one side of the front line to the other and finding that the fighters' dreams, hopes, and nightmares are often more similar than they are different. So there is a bigger story than the war itself, and this is the one I want to explore and share. For the enemy, I am using the latest technologies in virtual and augmented realities so you can engage directly with the combatants and meet them, hear them, and feel them the way I did. In many parts of our world, you create an enemy as a kid without having met your enemy because the society around you has created an enemy in the other. So the question is, could I be you if I was on the other side? Wonderful. So I guess to start the conversation, I would love to just ask you, what brought you to MIT and how did your experience collaborating with Professor Fox Terrell in the MIT community impact your work? Well, I was invited at MIT by um, William Ulricchio and Sarah Wolosin uh, at the Open Doc Lab. So this is, that was my first introduction. And, uh, and then from there, everything took kind of sense, even though now, uh, looking back, it's, it's, it's a, I, can see, I can see how transformative it, it's been. Um, I think the first thing and the most important thing for me uh, has been the ability to break all the walls that I had constructed among, around my work and how I was looking at storytelling 
um, and, and in being in an environment where everything is challenged, whatever is the status quo uh, is challenged, help me challenge my own journalism. Uh, and then with this, using new technologies, but most importantly, new technologies are there and they keep evolving. Uh, but what was, I guess, the richest part of all was my collaboration with uh, Professor Fox Harrell. Um, and, and in that sense that, as a journalist and him as a scientist, uh, we have different sets of, of, uh, of ethics. And it was so interesting to share those and see how science works and how journalism works and what we can do on one side and what we can't, and then finding a bridge in between uh, in order to do something that had not been done so far. Um, and this had profoundly changed the work, uh, my ability to really push the boundaries further uh, and, and then learn a great deal on, on the process. It's been about, I think, six or seven years since we first met through Fox's Advanced Identity Representation course. And I remember just being struck by the lineage of the Enemy Project from it being sort of a, a photo exhibit all the way to becoming a virtual reality exhibition and an AR app. Could you share a little bit about, um, you know, you've said something along the lines of stories are how we make sense of the world and experiences is how, are how we remember them. Um, could you share how these different media forms have influenced how you've told this story over time? It, it, it influences in, in a lot of way. When you're a photojournalist and you do a photo story, you already have a distribution in place. You work for magazines, the magazines have their own distribution. There's a lot you don't need to think about. And as a war correspondent, you, you really try to concentrate on the story you're doing, knowing you have the magazines behind you. But as you evolve and as you start thinking differently about your own work, um, it is always important to put to use the best medium in, in, for, for the best audience. And so in that sense, where I was medium-based for a long time, I am not medium-based anymore, and I think the big transformation is there. Um, the way I'm thinking is what, is, what is the issue that I want to cover that I think needs to be put in light? And then once I've got the issue, I wonder who should listen to that issue in order to have an impact. Who are the best audiences that should be confronted to this? And sometimes there might be the local people, and sometimes there might be, you know, stakeholders. And, and those are different strategy in order to get to one place or, or the other one. Um, so I think in that sense, thinking that what is my project, who's my audience, and then finally, what is the best medium to reach that audience? So if you, it, it completely transformed my way of thinking about my own work in that sense that my audience comes first. I'm audience centered now. And then the medium comes only after uh, finding what is the best medium for that audience. That's a great segue to my next question for you in talking about the audience and how they've received your work. Um, so my next question is, can you tell us a little bit about the impact of the enemy virtual reality exhibition and the augmented reality app? And more specifically, maybe you could share some of the feedback you've received um, from those who have experienced the enemy. Yeah, um, I mean, you, you talked about the experience before. I wasn't aware I was doing an experience. VR was creating the experience. I wasn't creating the experience. I was just filling up the blocks inside and, and the medium in itself is, is way more experiential. So in that sense, it is always very important to, to kind of focus on what, what is that that you want to say and how you, 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 you want to put it through. Um, and um, having different experience in different places with different audiences is always really, so when it comes to the impact, as a journalist, I've never been asked to have an impact. As a human being, I've wanted to have one. Uh, and so this is a marker that I've put up there and trying, to, and trying to do it. Because it's becoming experiential, because the work has become through VR and through walking in 300 meters square and meeting the people and having the choice to walk in different places. Uh, and it's not a VR with a, with a joystick in that sense. It's really you physically moving. Um, I think it, 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 it cre this is what creates the experience. And the experience is what eventually creates the impact. Um, how to, I mean, the, the feedbacks I had from my audience were always more, this is an experience. They remember it and they spoke about it as an experience, as a meeting they had with fighters, while it, they didn't really had those meetings. But everything that was in place here within the work was simulating that meeting. And I think it creates, when you have your own choice, when you can navigate left, right, listen to the people, they look at you directly in the eye, it creates a different level of experience and then therefore a different, different kind of impact. 
um, an impact is a different thing for different people. I think in, in, in when you cover wars and enemies the way I do, the ultimate impact would be to stop that war, but that's a bit too ambitious. Um, I, I would call my work being much more of a journalistic intervention. Journalism is something that needs to bring you an information that you didn't have in order to make a better decision. Um, but when you, I mean, I, I call it an intervention because people go 50 minutes into this VR experience and within the 50 minutes, they almost forgot they are in VR. So once they reach back alive, as they knew it before, they've been charged with this, they've been charged with the experience. And, and I think uh, it, it, it does change the sense of the perspective. It's a seed that you put, but it's hard to tell if that seed's gonna bring the, 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 the largest and highest oak tree you've seen in your life, or if it just stay there and never really sprouts. Um, so in that sense, it's hard to really answer. But this said, we, we've done a few interviews with users, and especially in Tel Aviv, um, where we could, we could show you now, perhaps um, um, what one of the user had to say about uh, the enemy walking out of this. <laughs> אז אתה מסתכל על אבו חייל בעיניים, אתה לא יכול באמת להגיד שהאויב שלך. בסך הכל מה הוא עושה? הוא נלחם בשביל החירות שלו כמו, כמו שאתה נלחם בשביל זה. נלחם בשביל החיים שלו ובשביל המשפחה שלו. כאילו זה טיפה יותר גרם לי להבין ש, ש, שהצד השני הוא מתנהל באותה, באותה צורה בדיוק כמונו. זה עוד שנה, לא יודע מה אני אעשה בצבא, אבל בטוח זה יהיה משהו... אי אפשר לדעת כאילו, זה בטוח יהיה משהו כנג, כנגד האו, האויב כביכול. כאילו... אני הולך להילחם נגדו, ומי שהסתכלתי לו בעיניים עכשיו. זה נורא מוזר, כי גם כשאתה חייל, אתה לא מקבל את ההזדמנות הזאת לעמוד מול האויב שלך ולשמוע אותו, זה בטוח לא מה שאתה מקבל בצבא. זה היה מעניין. אתה רואה, זה באמת מה שאני מדבר עליו, על הסיד. walking out of this he was really surprised to have encounter his enemy and to see similarities with his enemy in order to kill you need to dehumanize and my work was really about rehumanizing and trying to rehumanize the other and finding not not working on the differences but what is similar in between them and their basic humanity uh, yes you face killers yes you face people who've been involved in very violent acts but at the same time they still have always some parts and some somewhere some humanity and if you want to make peace you need to reconcile with that humanity in your enemy to start with and then fix everything then after um, so i think that's the first step um we can see is is, is, is as a matter of fact is is an Israeli who's going to be drafted and, and go a few months later uh, at, in the army. So this was an intervention because he realized something about his enemy he wouldn't have realized otherwise. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, on that same thread of planting seeds and watching them grow within your audiences, I'd love to know what projects are you currently or looking forward to working on next? So let's, let's back up. Just a second, it was not long ago. What is the story I want to do? Who's the audience I want to engage with? And what is the best medium to reach them? So um, I had gone to Congo and in 2015 for the enemy, um, I went to see the mines and I went to see a mine a very a gold mine where people were scratching with their hands the grounds. It's really a part of the, of, of the hill was steered apart and and I photographed there. And I photographed with my iPhone. And suddenly it struck me that I was using the minerals that were mining and it was in my phone. And I was using them to photograph them. So I started thinking, I need to do something about that. Um, it's an old story. We know in, within our electronics, we have so many uh, rare earth minerals and they come from countries that sometimes are problematic. And the DRC is definitely problematic. Um, and so I'm trying to, to create a link in between what's happening in Congo and you having your phone in your hands. And I'm using augmented reality. You're going to be able to visit all the parts and the components of your phone and see where those minerals are exactly located in your phone and why we're using them and definitely why they're indispensable. And then from there, we're going to be trickling down to back to the uh, to the mine where we realize what is the reality on the ground for the miners that are working there, often dying in horrendous condition, human rights abuse, workers uh, abuse, if not armed groups 
taking over some hearts and some minds and, and then financing their own fights with, with, uh, with the, the benefit of the mind. Yeah, as, a, as somebody who works in computer science, you know, I'm struck by how much ethics have come into the conversation in research uh, circles and industry circles. Um, but I think taking a step back and being really critical about the tools with which we tackle these issues is incredibly powerful. So I look forward to seeing that work. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, it's really trying to wake up younger generation um, that are using those natively, those, those electronics, and then reminding them that there is people that are mining uh, those minerals. And it doesn't have to be that bloody. It doesn't have to carry so much injustice. Uh, I'm looking at my phone as something that enables injustice. It's not the way we look at our phone. It's not the way we want to look at our electronics. Uh, but they do as of today. And us as consumer can request to stop this. We have the right to not have blood in our phones. And we should, in that sense, this is where my work is going, and this is what I'm gonna be proposing the audience uh, within the work, is to also have a sense of agency and says, I don't like that, and I wanna do something, and we propose them to do something. Impact, again. Absolutely, thank you so much, Kareem, for taking the time to talk to our community today. Um, I'd love to pass it back to Catherine um, to close the series, and um, I appreciate everyone who joined us on this webinar today. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Karim. This was a great conversation. Uh, thanks to everyone who joined us online, our audience. Uh, please join us next week for Three Questions with Jay Scheib and Rian Flynn, and visit arts.mit edu from anywhere for a wide range of arts activities, online exhibitions, performances, research, and more. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you very much. See you from Berlin. Thank you.